Hey folks, this is Vent with Ads Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to check out the Nine Zol Abyss DLC for AI War 2. I don't know if I'm pronouncing Nine Zol Abyss correctly, but so it goes. I'm a hot. What do you want? So I just got my press key for this, and it's worth mentioning that I haven't had a chance to play it, and it's also 10 days uh, out before it's actually launched to the general public yet. So everything that you're about to see is most definitely subject to change. Uh, my main goal today was just to quickly overview some of the new content that you will be getting with this particular DLC. And then, you know, if I can, I'll stream it. Uh, this game typically takes me two to four hours to play in all. And that's on the smallest map available on AI Difficulty 1. So let's just go ahead and jump into this Ninezul Abyss. Um, I'm going to go to single player and custom start. Primarily, this particular DLC adds uh, a new playable faction. So if I go to my DGA fleet here and i was messing around with the spire infused empire but uh you'll notice that there's a couple of new things uh, anything with the purple na next to it is the new content for the nine zol abyss <laughs> i'm probably gonna butcher that anyway so the necromancer sidekick is a powerful playable controller faction that cannot lose it can only be used in tandem when allied with another player faction typically in multiplayer the Necromancer is a Ninezul Technomancer who can resurrect destroyed ships to serve it. It has come to this region of the galaxy to harvest life force from rifts, powerful energy sources, in order to make itself stronger. Generally, a Necromancer must defeat their most powerful foes in order to become more powerful. Playing as the Necromancer sidekick will cause an additional copy of AI allied and elderlings to be spawned, as well as a unique faction called the Templar. Using the Necromancer sidekick is compatible with any playstyle, assuming that the sidekick isn't doing much. But if the sidekick is playing fully, then generally the AIP is going to be driven up a fair bit. Please see the in-game tips for how the Necromancer faction works. Um, okay, and then we've got the Necromancer Empire. It's a powerful, non-traditional empire-based player faction. Using the Necromancer Empire is not conductive to overly low AIP playstyles. <laughs> I... I go for the low AIP playstyle myself, so that might be a little bit difficult for me to get used to. Uh, this is a Ninezul Technomancer who can resurrect destroyed ships to serve it. Um, I've already read this part of it. Playing as the Necromancer Empire will cause an additional copy of... Okay, so we've read that already. Um, the Necromancer Empire is a powerful offensive and defensive mechanics, but it is a static, but its static defenses are not as strong as a human empire. Interesting. See, I like the turtle, so that, that, that worries me a little bit. Using your fleets for both offense and defense is important. Ninezul Sappers synergize excellently with the Necromancer to help cover the lack of static defenses. A Necromancer Empire is quite capable of standing on its own toe-to-toe -to -toe with any enemies that a normal human empire could face, but it's more complex to master. So, as you can see, there's two new playable empires with the sidekick, I guess, being more for multiplayer or something like that. I mean, maybe a second player helping the first player. That's what I'm guessing. Um, and then, if we go to Add Faction and we scroll down, we'll see the Elderlings. Uh, an incursion of Ninezul Elderlings has come into the galaxy. Each Elderling will defend a territory of the map and reproduce slowly. Eventually, more and more Elderlings will patrol the galaxy. Killing Elderlings will grant science. High impact. If the Elderlings are not called regularly, then they can make it very hard to move around the galaxy. All right, interesting. If we scroll down, you'll see some more here. The Ninezul Custodians, a relatively large collection of Ninezul that have found their way to our galaxy, have fractured due to disagreements, each new small force reaching out to potential allies. While no longer collectively strong, they will show undying loyalty to any that accept them. Medium impact. Enabling this faction causes a number of Ninezul to join in as allies to you, allies to the AI, and allies to minor faction teams. Uh, these Ninezul act as a very potent mobile addition to any team they manage to join and may potentially cover what normally would be a weakness. Um, I have to wonder if you can permanently set them as a, as a, a friend. Um, I mean, in the uh, other DLC, uh, like the Dark Zenith... Zvikari. I, I like having them as a backup, um, but I, I wonder if they're going to be similar. I'm not sure. 
Uh, the Ninezel migrant f fleets, um, they are migrating through the galaxy. Should you assist them in their journey, you may find your nation home to a new alien life. Uh, medium impact. This faction acts as a sort of never-ending quest for whatever team they're aligned with. Due to their constant appearance at a random on the map, they may either open up new holes in your enemy's defenses or aggravate them and leave you to pick up the pieces. On higher intensities, you may find yourself overwhelmed due to their sheer number. So be warned. Uh, the sappers. These Ninezel sappers will help their allies defend their planets. This faction is low impact, will assist their allies and have no downsides. Okay. Uh, so it's pretty standard then. The Wild Hives. Um, a number of Ninezul have started corrupting the resources of this galaxy and begun to spread. Largely ignored by the AI for the moment, they will be competing with you for control over your resources. They appear to be relatively peaceful if left alone, but their hives actively inhibit the abilities of any ships within their territory. If left alone and allowed to propagate in your territory, you may find yourself a new ally, albeit a very clingy one that greatly inhibits your regularly ec economic power. Be wary to not allow them to cripple you while you're not looking. Variable impact. This faction works by claiming, and in some cases stealing, resources that are normally yours. They can be exceptionally sticky and hard to remove once ingrained in a sector of the galaxy. If you only have one wild hives faction, they will otherwise be passive unless you attack them leading to an overall moderate impact. If you have multiple instances of this faction, however, they will actively compete with one another for resources and will be much more aggressive. Rival hives on the same planet will become aggressive, lashing out at not each other, but at any ships that also get in the way of their dispute. So those are the different factions that you'll be seeing with this. So basically, there's one new Necromancer playable faction that you can control, and then there's five NPC factions that you can assign. Uh, some other notable features that I was reading in both my press email and on the Steam store page, um, there's orbital ships, including new capturable wards that you can use with any fleet, new destroyer ship classes available for capture throughout the galaxy, the ability to hack AI command stations and turn them to your own use. There are pros and cons for each planet. Uh, various new strike craft and frigates in general, two new map types, eight new AI types, optional showdown devices, allows for alternative wind conditions where you get a hold on four mysterious devices on four planets. Capturing them will trigger an all-out war, which, if you can survive it, will lead to victory for humanity. Uh, optional brutal guardian layers, new evil layers full of an entirely new class of guardian spawn around the galaxy, periodically move. Killing them is difficult and raises the AIP, but gives you exciting rewards. So if you're a fan of AI War 2, then definitely check this out because there's a lot of new content. And, and to be honest, um, I am not an expert at this game whatsoever. I typically play my human fleet and then uh, or i use the spire infuse stuff uh which adds like new technology and ships to like cruisers and, and really cool stuff but it also ups the ai difficulty a bit um and then the ai at one and then i have the dark zenith zvakari and the human resistance fighters on my side to help me out um so i'll be really curious to see which of these will be beneficial to me as well but i guess we'll find out you know as i try the game out and try out different combinations so there you go folks hopefully this uh helped you out and you know you know learning more about this particular dlc if you guys haven't already subscribed to me on twitch and youtube that way you can stay up to date with any new content i can publish this is vince thanks for watching and i will catch you guys next time